Well, hello, and welcome to another Meet Your Army episode on Army Facebook Live, hosted by the U.S. Army's Office of the Chief of Public Affairs. My name is Hank Minitrez, and tonight I'm so excited. This is going to be a great show. We are joined by soldier athletes of the Army's World Class Athlete Program, or WCAP as we call it, because it's the Army and we love our acronyms. They are competing with Team USA in the 2022 Winter Olympics, and that is awesome. For those who might not be aware, WCAP is an Army program that allows top-ranked soldier athletes to train and compete throughout the year with the ultimate goal of competing in the Olympic Games. We're excited to have three of these soldier athletes joining today's discussion, so without further ado, let's meet our Olympic panel members. We'll start with Sergeant Justin Olson. Sergeant Olson is a coach for both the bobsled and skeleton events at the Winter Olympic Games. He's originally from San Antonio, Texas. Sergeant Olson joined the Army in 2011 and currently serves as a human resources specialist. He's a seasoned Olympian as a 2010 gold medalist. That's right, he is already a gold medalist. Earned that in the four-man bobsled event as well as a competitor in both the 2014 and 2018 Winter Olympic Games. So a breadth of Olympic experience already for our coach. So Sergeant Olson, thank you for joining our discussion. Great to have you. Hey, Hank, delighted to be a part of the panel. Um, thanks for having me, and I, I look forward to our conversation and, and here later this week, getting to China and, and getting to work. That's right, let's get it going, let's get it going. Next, we have Specialist Frank Del Duca. Specialist Del Duca is competing in the bobsled event at the upcoming Winter Olympic Games. He hails from Bethel, Maine, joined the Army in August 2019, currently serves as an infantryman. His prior athletic achievements include winning gold at the 2021 and the 2018 USA bobsled, bobsled Push Championship. So again, some great experience there. Specialist Del Duca, welcome to the show. Hi, Hank. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm also looking forward to the conversation. And yes, thanks for having us. I can't wait to hear your story. This has got to be interesting. Finally, we have specialist Benjamin Loomis, who represents Team USA in the Nordic Combined Skiing Event at the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. He's from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, enlisted in the U.S. Army in 2019. He was a silver medalist at the 2016 Youth Olympic Winter Games and the 2017 U.S. National Championships, as well as a member of Team USA at the 2018 Winter Olympics. So again, some great experience there going into this. Specialist Loomis, we are happy to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Hank. I'm really excited to be here and look forward to telling you all about WCAP heading into these Beijing Winter Olympic Games. Hua, hua. Well, again, thank you all so much for being with here uh, with us here today. We know that you are crazy busy as you're getting ready to go to Beijing, uh, especially right now. I'm sure last minute training, travel. So again, appreciate your willingness to share your time and more importantly, your stories here with us tonight. And that's important because as we reach a larger audience, there are plenty of people out there who don't even realize that we have soldiers who actually compete as actual Olympic athletes and metal and do very well. Um, as I say this, every time we've done one of these episodes, you know, we're really trying to show people what the Army is all about and, and how unique everyone's adventure in the Army can be. Um, there are so many myths out there, you know, thanks to television and thanks to movies, which of course have to over, over dramatize things. But you know, no, soldiers are not walking around in their dress uniforms all the time, saluting each other inside and outside and, and screaming at each other and best of the best of the best. Yes, sir. You know, there's so much more to it. And this is one perfect example of, wow, I didn't know that soldiers could actually compete in the Olympics and the Army supports them. So let's get right into it. First question is really for all of you, and we'll just go right down the line. Each of you will have a chance to answer. I know the, churn, the journey to becoming a soldier and an Olympian has looked different for each of you. You've each had different experiences. So how did you personally come to join the Army's World Class Athlete Program? How did you hear about it? What was your process? And how is it different from other Olympic training programs that you've been a part of? Let's go ahead and start with Sergeant Olson. I think, thanks. Uh, my journey started back in 2008 after doing a year of, of bobsled, and I fell in love with the sport. I, I, I knew that it was going to be a challenge to uh, move away from home and, and dedicate my life to something if I wanted to be good at it. And my very first roommate at the Olympic Training Center happened to have his uniform in the closet. 
And as soon as he got back to the room, I sat down. I said, tell me about that uniform. I mean, how are you here? How are you doing that? So I kind of got the firsthand experience, uh, you know, straight straight from the horse's mouth, if, if you want to call that. Um, but then I soon I, le- I realized that we had a couple soldiers on the team. And so I started to ask them about their experience and, and what kind of an opportunity was was WCAP. And they said, it's an amazing opportunity. I said, well, you know, how do I join? Well, it's not that, you know, it's not that difficult. First, you got to be in the Army. So you got to sign a contract and and then you apply for the program. So, um, yeah, I got started first in the sport, made the national team. I had already competed in my first Olympic Games and had some success before I had the time to go to basic training in AIT and learn my MOS. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm, I'm sure it wasn't a difficult process. You know, you walked into the recruiter's office, you had all your, your paperwork and you, you enlisted the normal way. And then you found the WCAP program. And then was it like an audition process? Well, there's an application and it's a little bit different for every sport. And okay. it's outlined on, on our website at armywcap.com. And you can just say, uh, you know, what's it take to, to be successful in this sport? And for for bobsled specifically, uh, competing in Olympic Games or competing at a World Championships or being a member of a, the national team or having potential to do those things mm. will kind of get you get you in the door and, and allow for you to be a part of the program. You, you know, the program's not very big, so you're going to have to be a, a special soldier athlete to come on in. That's very interesting that you were the athlete first and then became a soldier and then went off to do it. I've, I've talked to others in, in past Olympic Games that were soldiers first and then applied and, and became an Olympic athlete like the USA Taekwondo team is a big one that uh, that we used to highlight every year. So th- th- your story is very interesting. Very, very interesting. I can't wait to get into a little bit more about that. Um, I did have one question for you. It says bobsled and skeleton. Could you explain for the audience what the skeleton part is? Because I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so skeleton is a, a solo sport. It's it's not a team sport like bobsled is. And you we're going down the same track. Their sled's a little bit lighter. It's about 60 pounds, 75 pounds, and lay, they lay on their stomachs and go head first. Oh, gotcha. I've seen that before. That's, wow, you are a braver man than me for doing something like that. My, my, my hat's I'm off to you. I'm just coaching them, Hank. I don't think I would uh, be daring <laughs> enough to get under a skeleton sled. Yeah, that's got to take a special special amount of courage. All right, good. Thank you for that. Specialist Del Duca, over to you. What's what's your story? How'd you get involved and and what's it been like for you? I was an athlete first as well. I was on Team USA bobsled and we had I had teammates and coaches who were in the program, the the Army World Class Athlete program. And I was drawn to them for for several reasons. I I thought they led by example and they always seemed to have their stuff together and be prepared and they just really led by example. So I I kind of spoke with them and just said, hey, what's the process for for getting into this program? Do I qualify? What can I do to qualify? And what has your experience been like? So I spoke to a handful of athletes and coaches and I really liked what what they had to say. I liked what the program was doing for the army and for the team. So from what I could see, it was something that was was right for me. So I enlisted in 2019. I went to basic training and I had world class athlete program in my first contract. So this is this is my first assignment and my first military nice. contract. Oh, that is nice. That is so perfect. Well, let me ask you a question because you know, both you and Sergeant Olson have mentioned that you were you had already been accomplished athletes before joining WCAP. Uh, I, again, I'm a layman. I'm just kind of, you know, going by what I see when I watch television. But I would imagine that like your civilian counterpart athletes, you know, they're having to chase down sponsors all the time or their management team is probably to try to fund, you know, all of their training, all of their equipment, all of their gear. Does having joined the Army, does that take care of, of a lot of that stress because you're getting a paycheck, you're getting benefits? Um, and you've got a team behind you. Is that is that pretty much how it goes? That is exactly how it goes. I, I think there's a there is a common misconception that Team USA athletes are are well funded and we have salaries and all these things. And it's just not the case. We we all operate on our own savings and and 
you know, there are people up at the top of the endorsement chain that are probably doing pretty well. But for those of us, for most of us, we're all self-funded and, and yeah, we're going out, we're getting jobs in the off season or we're working remote or we're fundraising. So for me, I switched to driving this, this Olympic quad. I'm able to give all of my focus to my job. And that is right now on assignment at the Lake Placid Olympic Training Center with the team. So I don't have to stress about how am I going to pay for this or how am I going to do that. The military has supported me to do the things I need to do and get the equipment I need to get for success. So I'm very, very appreciative for it. And, and I owe much of my success to the support of the Army and the World Class Athlete Program. Well, I imagine as an athlete, you know, just with any sport, you know, injuries happen and you go to an army doc and they fix you up and there's no stress about how am I going to get medical care? That's just off the top of my head as an old guy. Uh, that's got to be comforting to you. Oh, absolutely. You know, the just ha having the, the support and the, the benefits as well, it really is, is it's just great. It really helps us so much and in a sport where yes, injuries happen and it's kind of a almost not if, but when, because we're pushing ourselves so hard when something comes up, you just know it's taken care of and you're in good hands and you have the support you need. That's an interesting aspect that I bet a lot of people don't think about. Interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Specialist Loomis over to you. Tell me your story. And, and, and really I'd like to hear like how you balance the responsibility of, um, you know, being an Olympic athlete as well as being a soldier. Yes, yeah, certainly. So similar to Sergeant Olson and Specialist Del Duca, I was an athlete previous to entering the Army. And in 2017, my team brought on a coach who was previously in the World Class Athlete Program. So he introduced myself and then my fellow teammate, Specialist Good, who was also in the World Class Athlete Program. He introduced us and following the 2018 Olympics, we took a hard look at WCAP and it was a good fit for both of us. We enlisted together and entered into the World Class Athlete Program together. Excellent, and, and you've been loving the experience ever since? Oh, it's been a great experience. And mirroring what these guys have said, it's really been much easier to focus on the sport and it has allowed me to commit to Nordica Mind Skiing and really take the next step in my career. How did you get started? Did you get started as a youngster or, you know, when did the, when did the, uh, the sport bug bite you and you decided, Hey, I, I'd like to be a professional athlete. I started skiing from a really young age. I was two years old when I started cross country skiing and then five wow. years old, when I started ski jumping. So it's always been a, a family sport for me and something I've grown up doing. I had an older brother who I followed around in the sport. And really when it took a turn for me, when I was 15 years old, I moved from Eau Claire, Wisconsin to Park City, Utah. And that was a big change for me, really allowed me to focus on training. I attended a sports school that gave me time off in the winter to travel for competitions. And preceding that, I made the national team a couple of years later, and it's it's been game on from there. That's pretty awesome. I'd like to talk a little bit about your sport in particular, because as, as a youngster myself, when I used to watch ABC's Wide World of Sports, you're way too young to, to remember that program, but Howard Cosell was on there. And he would he would always talk about the ski jumpers. And th you're talking like flying through the air at like a million miles an hour, 300 feet up in the air. How do you do that? <laughs> Uh, it's it's definitely an extreme sport. You know, we're going around 60 miles per hour down the ski jump and flying upwards of 400 feet in the air. So it is an extreme sport, but it's really controlled. And you start from a young age and progress your way up to bigger and bigger ski jumps. And the Olympic size ski jumps are about where they top off in terms of size. So it's a long and gradual progression in the sport. What's, what's been your biggest jump or your longest jump or how, however you measure like this was my best? My longest jump is 143 meters. So I, that's over 400 feet. And then just recently I had my longest jump in a competition of 138 meters. Holy moly. That's amazing to me. That's just simply amazing to me. And my hat's off to all three of you because you're doing things that you know, uh, us mere mortals only dream about or 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 we play, uh, what is it, what do they call that, 
uh, recliner quarterback or couch quarterback. And, and, oh, yeah, well, if you would have done this, but man, you guys are out there doing it. That's just so amazing to me. I'm, I'm very excited to be talking to you guys. Um, all of you have great stories. Um, let's get back to the, the whole responsibility of representing your country, both in uniform and at the Olympics. A couple of you've talked about having met previous world class world class athletes and and how they presented themselves impacted you and gave you a perception i'd like to hear we'll start with sergeant olson you know how, what's that responsibility like uh for you well i think the the underlying reason why i do this is is to inspire uh our our, our nation's youth or or and and even in our sport i mean you really don't get started until you're an adult so even if we're aspiring young athletes, and when I say young, you know, your rookie year is your youngest year. You don't have to be five years old. So, um, you know, serving as an inspiration to them that all things are possible through hard work, dedication, and, and, and a positive attitude. Because when I came into the sport, I mean, my eyes were big and I thought, there's, there's no way. I mean, look, look how fast these guys are. Look how strong they are. How am I going to do that? And then I started to slow it down a little bit and, and, and I found my role models on the team and most of them were, were soldiers just like they were when I was growing up. I have always admired the men and women who, who made that choice to serve. And so, you know, what drew me to the program was, uh, or I'd, I'd say to the army was I always wanted to serve and I always wanted to compete at that elite level, but, um, it means more, your legacy means a lot more. And, and, you know, somebody might watch and, and see, your performance or your actions through a little bit different lens. And, and all I can hope for is that you believe that nothing's impossible. Mm. If you, you know, if you get the right team behind you, you make a solid plan, you work your tail off and you're a hundred percent all in. That's really all you can ask for. Not, you know, not every team is going to win, but you'll be a better person for, for going out there and, and not being afraid to re, you know, set some goals that are, some might say that's a little far fetched. Wow. No, that inspiring words. I, I love the don't think that anything's impossible attitude. Um, again, having interviewed many, many professional athletes, that's sort of a, a common theme there. And, and it really is true. My kudos to you again. I just I just can't believe that uh, that we get a chance to talk to you guys. Specialist Del Duca, how about you? The responsibility of representing your country, both in uniform at the Olympics. What does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot. We're, we're wearing two uniforms, but it's for the same team. It's for USA and, and this wonderful country. And we don't take that lightly. I, I'm now a part of that group of people that I looked up to, of these people that carry themselves with, with respect and, and being selfless towards those around them and making sure that their actions are for the betterment of the team. And I'm learning from them. I'm growing from them. And, and it really is just... It's such an honor, and I'm very grateful to be a part of, of the, the Army and then World Class Athlete Program. Outstanding. Specialist Loomis, what does it mean to you to represent your country both as a soldier and as an Olympian? It's a true honor, and I'm really looking forward to these games. Uh, following my, my Olympic experience in 2018, I was when I enlisted following that, so this will be a new experience for me going in as a soldier as well. And like I said, I'm truly honored. And just to give a, a bit of a backstory, when I was in basic training, uh, no one really knew for a while that I was an athlete or that I had intentions of going into the world-class athlete program. But then eventually word spread and people found out and I was shocked by how supportive people were and they all loved it, loved the idea. So it was really cool to me to have that support and for everyone to be encouraging of this opportunity. Oh, that's awesome. I was going to ask you about that because you, when you go to Army basic training, it's a different world and, and for a, a very good reason, you know, turning uh, civilians into soldiers and, you know, and there's a lot of uh, uh, intentional stress put on you as you're going through our um, basic combat training uh, to build your character, you know, break you down, build you back up, make you stronger than before. And in the back of my mind, I was like, what was it like when the drill sergeant found out like, oh, we got a hero over here. He's an Olympic medalist. What's going on? I mean, but it's it's nice to hear they were very supportive. Very cool. 
Um, let's move along now. Let's talk a little bit about your military occupations. Um, you all have a separate MOS. Uh, you know, one of you was able to get WCAP in your enlistment contract. That's that's outstanding. Um, but I think our audience might be wondering, how are you able uh, during during regular times to to sort of balance the responsibilities of your training so that you keep up your athletic ability and also perform your duties as a soldier. Sergeant Olson, let's kick that over to you first. Well, I can say that that juggling the two is, you know, earlier we talked a lot about we were 100% of our time is is into training and, yeah. and that is our, our job. But at the same time, we we are we are soldiers and we have to perfect our craft and and stay up up to speed on that. So. Um, one of the opportunities that, you know, I, uh, before Sochi, I actually, before 2014, I, I got to go to BLC before oh, nice. I became a student. And uh, it wasn't the time that I, I had hoped it was going to be. It was in September and we were leaving in October. Wow. So we all kind of looked at each other and said, hey, this is what we signed up for. So let's go out to Colorado and let's try to get the distinguished honor grad. I mean, all of us are going to be fish out of water. You know, yeah. we're not uniform we wear every day is is this one right here you know we're not wearing we're not wearing ocps and and showing up to formation uh you know quite as often as everybody else so our daily lives look a little bit different but i think what was really cool about it was um uh, we got out there we learned as fast as we could we knew we were going to make mistakes sure. but you just have to be resilient and and you have to say hey i'm ready for the challenge and i know this is going to be uncomfortable because it's not what i do every day um but now that I'm a coach, I, I, I do a little bit more of, of my MOS as the 42 Alpha, and I try to serve as a, you know, administrative liaison to all of the soldier athletes that we have up in Lake Placid. And nice. it can become stressful at times, but I think if you just strive to be the very best version of yourself and, and you know, ask questions of your, your mentors and your platoon sergeants and say, hey, you know, what can I do better and how can I better serve these soldiers? That, that's really what it's all about because the, the army is about growth and leadership and and people are going to make mistakes it's what you decide to do with those mistakes so uh it's it's not easy but but you just got to be ready to be a fish out of the water every once in a while and and give everything you got sure sure you know either be buried by your stake or you're going to learn from it and grow become a better soldier better leader so good on you for that that's interesting that you had to go to blc right before that's that would have stressed me out. I, again, kudos to you. You guys are a, definitely a special breed. Uh, Specialist Del Duca, what's been your experience with having to balance both? I think you said that this was already written into your contract and this was your first assignment. So how's that been going for you? Yes, that's correct. So I went to Fort Carson to in process into the world class athlete program. And then I actually flew straight to a bobsled race. <laughs> so we it was it was basic training in processing jump on a sled let's go race so we we're always representing the army we are uh, we're soldiers but we're athletes as well so sometimes we have to we're wearing the same uniform but we'll switch the hats so gotcha that week I was I was a bobsledder I was it was all bobsled but when I'm not traveling on tour with the team and, and training and competing. I'm doing my military obligations, whether that be schools or trainings or whatever we whatever we have on our plate, we just make the time to do it. And it takes a little more forethought, a little planning. And and because right now we've been on tour competing for, for several weeks, even months at this point. So you have to make sure you're getting your obligations done with the military and then also performing at a high level with Team USA. So once once you know, we've all prepared for Beijing. We're going to go over. We're going to do our absolute best. Then when I come back, I'll probably do more military stuff and, and Bob Sled will kind of be over for a little bit. I'll focus on my military obligations, okay. make sure I'm continuing to learn and grow in the, in the military sector. And then I'll go back, um, you know, this time next year and be training and competing as a Bob Sledder. So you kind of do both. That's really cool. Now, what we what was your basic training experience like? Did they find out that, you know, you were going to be a world class athlete? You know, what was the environment like if that happened? I think I lost you on the audio. My apologies. 
No, that's okay. I'll, I'll repeat the question. What was your basic training experience like? And did they find out uh, like they did uh, with, with our other Olympian? Did they find out that you had joined up to be a world-class athlete? If so, what was that like with, uh, with your uh, platoon? Basic training was, was actually a great experience. Um, it was, I likened it to more of my experiences as a team. You know, you're going through something as a team and there are some good days and yes, there are intentional stressors put on you, but you know, really when you're a part of a team and you have those, um, those skills to, to work together and, and find what we need to do and how to do it, it really, I, I enjoyed basic training and I, I missed the guys I met there, you know, we stay in touch and it really was a great experience. I didn't, I didn't tell anyone I was doing uh, bobsled or the world class athlete program. Just for me, I was focused on what we were learning and doing, and it, it didn't seem too applicable at the time. Mm. But as you know, as the stressors tend to get a little less towards the end, and you start talking a little more and opening up to yeah. people, I, I told a couple guys, and a couple people found out, and yeah, it was very. Um, it was well received and the drill sergeant said, Hey, you know, good going, we'll be rooting for you. And, and that's cool. You do that. And some asked some questions and I was almost taken aback because at that point, you're not really having those types of conversations with the drill sergeants, but they were like, Hey, tell me about this. This sounds cool. What's, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad it was such a good experience for you. Um, it's amazing the amount of support that, uh, that you've been getting out there, even from, your very first days in the army. So that's outstanding. Really, really cool. Specialist Loomis, how about you? Balancing responsibilities of, of being a, a world-class athlete along with being a soldier. What's that been like for, for you? Yeah, so starting off with basic training, it was uh, a break for me to take from skiing. I've been, I've been doing it for so long and I'd never taken that long of a break from training and from skiing. So that really left me very motivated to get back into skiing as well as pursue my career in the Army. And I'm fortunate that WCAP has been so supportive and it can certainly be tricky to balance some of the obligations, but it's very worth it. I've been thrilled with the experience and the support from WCAP as well as the Utah National Guard where I'm based has been immense and it can be a challenge for sure, but it's very rewarding as well. Well, you three are breathing some rare air, as they say. You know, when this is all said and done, there aren't that many soldiers who can say that they were a professional athlete, they were a world-class athlete, they were Olympians and soldiers. Very few of you can say that. So, you know, if anything, 20 you know, million years from now, when you're bouncing your grandson on your, on your knee, Dad, what'd you do in the army? Or grandpa, what'd you do in the army? You can proudly say I was an Olympian. That's pretty outstanding. Um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit more about the upcoming Olympics. We've got your backstories. Now let's look ahead. This week, you're gonna be in Beijing for the 2022 Olympic Games. Sergeant Olson, what are you looking forward to? Well, number one, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the performances of these you know, these athletes, both civilians and soldiers, you know, I've been uh, for the last two years now working with them almost every day and, and just seeing their journey. I mean, I, I know that that specialist Del Duke and I had a conversation in September and he said, this is what I'm going to do. And I said, let's hear it. And he outlined his map to making the Olympic team. And it was not uh, what everybody else was going to do. And I said, hey, that's what, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Go out there and get it. Yeah. Because that's what is a plan. So, and I'm looking forward to, to you know, watching all of our soldier athletes uh, compete. But, uh, you know, most importantly, as a coach, I, I, my role is to support and to make sure that they, they have what they need and, and there aren't any distractions. And, and uh, I know that when we want to, when we won our gold medal and when we raced in 2014 and 2018, our coaches provided an immense amount of support. Like, we didn't know that we were at the Olympics. We didn't know that there was all this other stuff going on because it's just, hey, we need you to stop over here for a few minutes and, and answer these few questions. And then, you know, you'll be on your way. So I look forward to the performances. I look forward to the, uh, you know, the amazing moments that Team USA uh, always provides. You know, I, I think uh, here comes Diggins was probably the one of the biggest uh, phrases yeah. of 2018. And 
Yeah. Um, just getting to see people that, I mean, now, you know, now Del Duca and, and Loomis and, and all the other Debbie Cap soldier athletes get to be a part of that family, you know, once an Olympian, always Olympian. But, but just like being in, being in the military, you're a part of something much bigger than yourself. And so you share, you share those victories together. We go through it together and, and I can't wait. Well, you bring up a couple of interesting points. So two questions for you. Number one, uh, you're the coach. So, so how many WCAP athletes uh, total? And number two, do you guys get to stay in Olympic Village like everybody else? And do you ever mingle with the other athletes from other countries and other sports? Are we talking about just our delegation for 2022 or the total program? Um, just the delegation for 2022. So we've got nine soldier athletes, okay. including our coaching staff, um, five athletes, four coaches. And then, uh, yep, we're just like everybody else. Uh, we're, we stay in the Olympic Village. You know, we uh, many of our teammates are civilian teammates and and uh, we just like, I mean, Del, Specialist Del Duca said it perfectly. You know, you wear multiple uniforms, different hats. It's here and it's there. And, and uh, yeah, just, just like everybody else, we just, uh, we also have to remember that we're soldiers too. Roger that. I get what you're saying. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, Specialist Del Duca, over to you. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, once you hit the ground in Beijing? It'll be my first Olympics, so I just want to to take it all in, you know, take a moment to, I don't even know if I've done it yet, just take a moment to be like, wow, this is, you know, this is happening and and it's a dream come true and just continue to prepare and, and enjoy the moment, but then I'm excited to compete. I absolutely love competing and I'm a, I'm a racer at heart, so now that I'm driving and I get to compete on the world stage and be representing the Army and Team USA and my support system, friends, family. It really is just, it's a dream come true. So I'm, I just can't wait to compete. I, I just, I, I'm envisioning like being on the start line, hands on the, on the push bar and I'm just yeah. I'm ready, ready to go. And I just can't wait to do it. So, but yeah, like I said, I want to take it into and, and be a part of, of the team and kind of share this experience together. Cause it's, it's several of my friends and teammates first, Olympics and then a, a handful of them have said it's their last. So we're all a part of, of, of the same journey, but we're on different timelines. And I just want to experience that with the team and, and be there for my teammates and then go out there and compete with all I've got. Visualization. You hear that a lot whenever you talk to athletes. They'll spend time visualizing, oh, just like you said. I mean, down to the minute detail hands on the bars, doing this, doing that, standing on the first place podium, getting that gold medal. Keep that vision going, and I'm wishing you the best of luck. That's awesome. Specialist Loomis, how about you? What are you looking forward to when you hit the ground in Beijing this week? Well, first and foremost, uh, this being my second Olympics, I, I feel like it's my first Olympics again, going in as a soldier for the first time. So I'm most excited about that as well as get into meet and see a lot of my fellow WCAP teammates will be really cool. And it's also going to be a very different and new experience for all athletes going to China is not somewhere that most athletes compete regularly. So it'll be different and puts everyone on a level playing field in a sense of there's not a lot of local athletes or there's not a lot of local competitions held there previously. So It'll be really exciting to get to the new venues, which all look spectacular and show what we can do as Team USA and World Class Athlete Program. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so pumped for you. You have no idea. As a follow on, I want to go back to Sergeant Olson, uh, both as a coach and as someone who has not just competed, but has gold medaled uh, in Olympic Games. What advice are you giving um, to the delegation and what advice specifically have you given to our panelists? Well, I think the, uh, you know, opening ceremonies, if we, if we choose or we're uh, permitted to uh, partake in that, take it in. You know, I remember that was really the only moment I let my, I personally let my guard down and said, wow. I mean, I, my heart was racing. I, I couldn't believe that I was in a stadium, you know, sitting shoulder to shoulder with some of the best athletes in the world. Um, and then a couple of days later, I, I put the blinders back on and, and I remember that it, I'm here to, to complete the mission and I'm here for a reason. Um, so, 
You know, I didn't come to the Olympics to be a spectator. I could be a spectator at home. I came to the to the Olympics to represent my my family, my friends, do this alongside my teammates and and not forget who you are. You don't have to be anything more than who you are because that's what got you to this Olympic team. So we don't need to don't need to overreach. We don't need to to go the extra mile. The work is done. We need to keep doing what we have been doing to be successful to this point and really just come out there on race day and and execute to the best of our abilities. That consistency and then that focus. I, I totally get what you're saying. I've, I've been in events myself where you walk in and you're like, and you become starstruck and they're like, no, wait a minute. I'm here for a reason. Focus, breathe in, breathe out, concentrate, and let's get this done. So good on you for doing that. that good point. Very good point. All right, guys, let's switch it up a little bit. We talked a lot about Beijing. We've talked a lot about your stories. Um, we'd like to uh, always inform our audience or, or introduce our audience to uh, soldiers and their hobbies and their lifestyles because, again, we are all from different parts of the country, different regions, different backgrounds. Uh, so let's get to know you just a little bit. We'll go down the line. Uh, I'll ask a question, and if the three of you can just uh, shotgun answer it uh, on your own, that'd be great. Um, what would you be doing if you were not a soldier athlete? Fire away when, fire away when ready. I'd be a soldier. I'd be competing against my peers trying to be number one there. All right. Specialist Del Duca. I'd probably be out racing cars or ski racing or, or just trying to go fast somewhere. Going fast somewhere, racing cars. That's a man after my own heart. Um, Specialist uh, Loomis, how about you? What would you be doing if you were not a soldier athlete? That's that's pretty hard to say for me. I think skiing and being in the, the Army are my two biggest identities. So I really can't say what I would be doing right now. And it's, it's hard to imagine life without those two things. Gotcha. Back over to Sergeant Olson. Most recent movie you watched? Um, well, most, I most recently watched Ozark. I caught up on the new episodes of that before we went to Beijing and what a crazy show is all that, I can say. So that is a crazy show. And side note, uh, a very good friend of mine, we were both 46 Romeos together a long time ago. That was broadcast journalist, uh, Dave McDonald stars in that show. Another soldier that has gone on to do other things that you would not associate with being sort of army ish. Uh, just like you sure. guys. That is really sure. cool. Great show, though. Absolutely. You're right. Specialist Del Duca, last movie or show you watched? I watched Rush. It's a it's a movie about two famous Formula One drivers. And uh, it's, a, it's yes. a great movie about, about racing and, and life in general and some two very different characters uh, racing against each other and being fierce rivals, but also respecting each other. So it's a great movie. Probably my yep. favorite. Yep, know the movie well as a, as a racer. Absolutely. Great movie. You're absolutely right. All right, Specialist Loomis, most recent show or movie you watched? I watched the latest James Bond movie, No Time to Die, I believe it's called. I watched that yesterday on the plane. It's a great movie, a little bit sad. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah, no, I'm a lifelong Bond fan. Saw the movie, mixed feelings about the ending. So I'm not sure what Barbara Broccoli is going to do with the franchise, but I'll be interested to see. Very cool. Okay, back up to um, Sergeant Olson' favorite book. The uh, the Hot Zone. We were required to read that in high school. I think that's the first book that I read the entirety from open to close. No kidding. It's about Ebola, Zaire virus. Yeah, I was. Wow. Hooked. Wow. Okay, I'm writing that down as a book to read. I've not read that one. Specialist Del Duca, favorite book? What's crazy, I read it in middle school and I've yet to find a book that captures uh, my emotions like this. It's called High Heat. It's a, it's a book about uh, baseball and a young kid going through some adversity and, and really just an incredible, incredible storyline, High Heat. Nice, High Heat, also writing that one down. And Specialist Loomis, over to you, favorite book? Um, I will say I just got a new book today called Dope Sick that I am looking forward to reading. Really? So, side note, 
Uh, Dope Sick was made into a mini series on Hulu starring Michael Keaton and Rosario Dawson. And you'll see me if you look really hard. I was an extra in that. Uh, so yeah, the book is really good. The mini series also very, very good. Um, all right, back up to Sergeant Olson. Favorite season, summer or winter? Summer for sure. Growing up in Texas, it's pretty much summer 12 months out of the year. <laughs> well, that's and that's another part of the story right there. You are from San Antonio, Texas. And yeah. how did you get into bobsledding? I don't see a lot of snow down there. What What's up with that? You know, I was in between playing football at, at uh, I was getting ready, getting ready to walk on at, at Texas A&M and see if I could make their football team. And my mom said, why don't you try out for the bobsled team? There's going to be a tryout down at Comlander Stadium. And I said, Mom, nobody tries out for bobsled in San Antonio. Whatever you heard is a lie. <laughs> and then uh, a couple of weeks later, she said, hey, did you give it any more thought to that bobsled tryout? And I said, Mom, are you for real? You're really still talking? I mean, if it'll make you happy, I'll drive out there and I'll see what, you know, see what the fuss is about. And <laughs> I mean, I couldn't really ask for a better story, but I, you know, I kind of turned that and just say, not everything good that your parents tell you to do is, is kind of be the best. Cause as free thinkers, we, we like to think we're in control of our own uh, destiny, but you know, this one time and many times thereafter, I heeded her advice and look where it landed me. I mean, I, yeah. I knew what Bob was. I never thought that I would uh, be good enough to make the team. Uh, but yeah, here you just are. Just on a whim. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Specialist Del Duca, summer or winter for you? Summer. Yeah, I'm with you. As a winter athlete, still, it's I, I love the sports in winter, but I love the, the climate of summer. Well, you can do more racing in the summer, right? In your car. Exactly right. <laughs> Excellent. Specialist Loomis, summer or winter for you? Did we lose him? I'm very much uh, in between. I like the spring when I can ski in the morning and it's nice and sunny and warm and I can go bike in the afternoon. That's, that's why I love living in the mountains and love those spring days. Ah, best of both worlds. That's that's right. That's it right there. Very good. Sergeant Olson, run or ruck? I'll ruck any day. I get I get outran on the regular. Yeah, dude. Same thing here. When I was in the army, not the fastest runner. Always passed my run. Never had a problem passing the two mile run. But you strap that ruck on my back and tell me I need to go twelve miles. I got it all day long. I can do it. Drop of a hat. Let's do it. I'm with you on that I'm one. Specialist Del Duca, run or ruck? Ruck all the way. Heck yeah. Okay, now we're talking. I, Loomis, I struggle with the two mile. I do struggle with the two mile. Oh, do you really? That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, just everything we do is such short bursts of, of speed and power that, um, yeah, that two mile, I, I mean, I do okay, but just relative to everything else. But I can strap a, a ruck on and just go. Ah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. I, I've talked to people who athletes who were like sprinters, you know, 200 meter, 400 meter, two miles was difficult for them, but they could really knock out that short burst stuff uh, quite easily. Um, maybe it's more anaerobic than aerobic. I'm not sure what it, I'm not a professional, but uh, yeah, what you just said rings true to me from what I've talked with other professional athletes. Specialist Loomis, over to you. Run or ruck? Uh, seeing as I'm in the minority here, I'm definitely taking running. That's uh, <laughs> part of my training and something I can always excel at in the Army. Very good. Very good. There's a, there's always got to be one like me. Doesn't want to be like everybody else. Got to be in the minority. That's awesome. Fantastic. Well, guys, those are great answers. A little bit of fun kind of peeking into your personal lives and, and getting to know your personalities a little bit. Um, one last question as we wrap things up. This has been a great conversation. Uh, we talked a lot about being driven, both as an athlete and as a soldier, the things that motivate you. Um, what are you looking forward to after you return from the Olympics and you're able to kind of reset after all these months of training? Sergeant Olson, over to you. Well, I'm looking forward to 
to really getting into the nitty gritty of my military career and, and, you know, challenging myself as a leader and as a soldier and, and hope to hope to go to OCS as soon as possible and, and go to that board and, and be accepted and, and maybe one day get to come back to Bobson as a coach. But, you know, I, I finally feel like it's okay for me to, to, to step away and, and, you know, for a long, for the longest period of time, I was so, so focused on being the best in the world at bobsled. I couldn't imagine, you know, spending more than six months away. I mean, I, I did basic and AIT and three days later we had push championships. I, I flew straight wow. from Fort Jackson and I don't even think that I had done a sprint yet, but I, we had world championships at home that year. And I said, I'm not going to miss out on the opportunity to, to win world championships again. So, uh, I can't wait to uh, to come home and, and accept that new challenge. I I don't know much of what it's going to be like. I know it's probably going to be hard and oh yeah, and it takes time, but uh, yeah, I'm ready for it. Excellent. Well, I, I wish you all the best in in applying to and being accepted for Officer Candidate School. That's that's a brilliant, brilliant goal to have. And with all the leadership experience you have up to this point, not just as a non-commissioned officer, but having been an Olympic coach, having to sort of lead and mentor and guide a team that will serve you well as an officer in the United States Army. I wish you all the best with that. Thanks, Hank. You betcha. Specialist Del Duca, how about you? What are you looking forward to after the Olympics? Well, I'm looking forward to taking some time to catch up with family and friends and spend some time with my wife and yeah, just catch up with, with family and spend a little time together. We, we do get very focused and, and devote all, all of our time to, to this. And so catching up with them is great. And then I'll have some time to devote back to my military career and, and see what I can and do in, with the military. And yeah, just kind of put on, put on the other hat, switch uniforms and uh, yeah, get back to work. Switch gears, get back to work. Love it. Specialist Loomis, how about you? What are you looking most forward to once you get back from the Olympics? So pretty soon after the Olympics, still have a few competitions to finish off the season. So excited to keep that rolling and keep skiing through the winter. But preceding that, I'm looking to attend BLC here in the next year. So I'm excited for that and keep progressing in my military career and get back in touch with my local unit here in Utah a little bit more. So it's going to be a busy year coming up, and I'm excited for it. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank all of you, by the way. It's uh, all the time we have for our show tonight. I want to give a special thank you to each of our panel members for sharing your experiences and your story with us. This has been so great. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I know our viewers and listeners have as well. And, and for those of you who are watching, uh, you can also check them out at their website. If you have questions about the World Class Athlete Program, ask them in the comments section. We've got folks who are online who can answer your questions about how to join the program, what it can do for you, what are the qualifications and the requirements. And we also want to give a special shout out to everyone who's joined us virtually for this Meet Your Army episode. We want to thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the event. And to learn more, again, about WCAP, visit armywcap.com. That's A-R-M-Y-W-C-A-P.com. And follow along on social media for live updates during the Olympic Games at U.S. Army WCAP. Again, thank you, everyone. Gentlemen, best of luck to you. You've got our full support. Go Team USA. And for all of us here at the Office of the Chief of Public Affairs, thanks for watching. I'm Hank Benitrez. We'll see you next time. And that's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. That was great. All right. Woo. Yeah, really, really good. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to to uh, seeing uh, you guys do well over there. Yeah. See you later. Hey guys, Joe Adams. That was fantastic. We really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your stories. And we had uh, quite a few participants and lots of likes, shares, and comments. So really good, uh, really good session. Thank you for doing this and. Best of luck moving forward. Hank, well done, my friend. Hey, this was a lot. This was a lot of fun. And Joe, I just want to thank you because you, you know you're always reaching out, giving me the opportunity to moderate these.
um, I'm happy to do it. I love doing it. I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, 33 years of broadcasting and I'm still at it. Thanks to folks like you who believe in me. So thank you very much. My pleasure, my friend. And, and Victor and Nick, thanks for everything. I think uh, we appreciate everything you guys are doing to make this pull us all off. So um, I think we're clear, guys. Again, thanks very much for doing this. And best of luck moving forward. We are. And if, we, if we can ever do anything, you know, please reach out. Um, Sergeant Olson, as far as you want to pursue the uh, the officer thing, um, we got some hooks and we got some uh, folks who can might help you down that path. Yeah, don't so, don't lose don't lose my name, Sergeant Olson. I've I've already helped one one soldier get through OCS, get accepted. So you know, look me up. Yeah, I'm happy, I'm yeah. happy to write something for you. Okay, I appreciate that. I uh, I've only glanced at it a little bit. I had my packet kind of together, and then I broke my neck. And Oof. my commander said, "You kind of got to hold off on that whole application, you know, since you have a profile." So uh, I wanted to see this through, go to the Olympics, support these these men and women, and and yeah. and then, uh, take some time to better myself too. Yeah, get get yourself cleared by med. Get you know, get the docs to sign off on it. Then look me up, okay? I'm serious. My day job, I work in the Army G1, like the top personnel. So look me up. I'm serious. Okay. I'll hey, before you guys go, we you, we talked a little bit about um, fitness, run, rock, ACFT. Have all you guys taken it? And, and what are your thoughts? <laughs> no? I That's like a it. can of worms. <laughs> it's a slippery slope, but um, <laughs> huge pivot for the Army. I mean... It's, yeah. uh, yeah. we've been doing the same PT test for, you know, 246 years. Um, and this is clearly a new direction. Um, I think if we did a one mile run, people like, uh, a specialist Del Duca and myself, cause we, I remember in 2011, we were doing trials for this ACFT. We didn't really yeah. know what we were doing at morning, morning PT, but you know, I, I, I don't know if, if there's a record for the medicine ball toss, but I'll go for it. And, you know, we, it's kind of right up the alley of how you train to be a bobsled athlete is these plyometrics and the shuttle runs and the, the litter carry. And we just really struggle at the two mile because our, our muscle fibers are not like specialist Loomis. I mean, yeah. we couldn't be much different from each other in that regard. So I think it's wonderful. I can't wait to take it. Um, Someone from Korea was just, you know, how far do you think you can throw that ball? And I said, well, we're going to find out here pretty soon after the Olympics. Nice. I think it's cool. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I, I, I served for 27 years and I just remember on, you know, PT test days, sometimes it was a struggle just to get enough mats and get it organized. Yeah. So now the resources and all the stuff you need to execute an ACFT, a little bit different. Um, you know, not everybody's been doing deadlifts their whole life. And, and so now you're incorporating all these different movements. And, and I think there's goodness in it. Um, but I also think, you know, in order to be good at deadlifts, you got to do deadlifts. It's just it's more wear and tear on everybody's joints. And it's just not taking the test two times a year. It's everything you need to get ready for it. Um, and we all know there's, there's enough grind in the Army. And I'm, I'm, my concern is that the long-term well-being, the force, um, I think it's a great test, but I think it comes with a certain cost as well. Yeah. Um, so my two cents. Luckily, uh, the deadlift is a hex bar. So luckily yeah, it's yeah, yeah. If it a little was bit a little bit better. Barbell, yes, if it was yeah, a barbell was a, deadlift, no, a, I think a lot of people would be popping their backs. Um, yeah, yeah. because the reality is, you know, I mean, there's millions of CrossFitters across the Army, but there's also millions who've never done anything like that. Yeah. And, and you guys have all, I'm sure, done the deadlifts and you just round your back a little bit. You get in a bad position and you're going to get hurt. And that's it. So yeah. I guess, you know, I keep thinking about this. We've been we've been grappling with this whole ACFT thing for a long time. <laughs> um, and, you know, as a CrossFit guy, you know. Who has who's had bilateral hip replacement? Yeah. You know, I, I we all know the kind of the the, the, the wear and tear and the grind um, of some of those exercises. So, but 
I guess that's where we're going in April. So hopefully, we shall see. Hopefully, um, you know, leadership or, or personnel can really show proper form. And I, me personally, I think it's a little more applicable to what you might see at ACFT is combat fitness and, and you're still getting the two mile in, but now you're, you're moving weight because if you yeah. need to move someone out of harm's way, yep. you know, now you've trained to kind of move move you know a couple hundred pounds around and yeah. i don't think it's it's gender neutral i believe so you know the deadlift is not, not it is um, without question and i think they are all functional yeah. movements you know that they absolutely make sense given a lot of the tasks and requirements that we have in the army um i'm so, excited because i'm a bigger person so uh, that'll be nice to see uh <laughs> you know if if i were to go down in combat or something like that see if uh See if somebody can drag me out because it's my take to you. Yeah, you know, my gut or my my main position all along is I thought the Marines kind of get this right, you know? Pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, three-mile run. You can't fall out of bed and, and do well on a three-mile run. Pull-ups, wow. you got to move your own body weight. You know, there's no hiding from that. Yeah. Um, so I always thought it was just better in terms of functionality. They don't let you. They don't let you enlist unless you can do a pull up on the spot, right? I don't know what the the latest of. You know, I know when I was at AMRG, we used to activate at national events all over the country, and I'd go out there with these seven million dollar trailers and all all the high speed stuff. Marines would show up with the same shit every time: three yeah. marines and a pull up bar. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. So. When I was on recruiting duty, that's exactly what they did. You know, the army we're passing out you know, t-shirts and, and swag and the Marines are out there challenging people to pull up contests. <laughs> Some things never change. Okay, gents, again, thanks very much. We appreciate your time and looking forward to it. Hua, yes. Good luck to all of you and um, I'll be watching.